Hey everybody, I know it's been a short minute or two <laughs> since I've done a video for you guys on uh, YouTube. But uh, uh, July, or June 30th through July 5th, we were, first we went to my sister's wedding in the UP. And then on the 2nd, we crossed the border into Ontario and we did some geology, or I did some geology with somebody who bought a decent sized island in the middle of what's called Trout Lake, a little bit north of Sault Ste. Marie, uh, kind of where Trans Canada 17 and 556 break off. And I, I know most of you don't know where that is. Anyway, I digress. But the point of it was to study some of the Precambrian Huronian rocks and perhaps the most understudied formation of the entire supergroup, which is the Awers, A W E R E S, Awers, Awers. Anyway, same thing for the township where most of the formation sits in. It was made in 1927 and it stuck around. It's the only formation in that publication they still use. Uh, there's a couple others like the Duncan Formation, which actually is now the Thessalon. And the, there's another one, Driving Creek, which is actually Livingston Creek now, and, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, so this thing has been mapped, basically just drawing a bunch of faults around it, except on the east side of the formation, where it's in contact with the Thessalon. And it is pretty diverse, surprisingly, for a sandstone to a conglomerate. There's a couple of mudstone layers that we discovered while we were on the little island. But um, yeah, these cuts, looks like a defensive wounds. I actually got these on the 4th of July, trying to uh, chase down a dike someone had mapped, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, and I didn't find it. So it's either not there or it's covered or, you know, either way, I don't think it's it's too, it's too young for what I need it for anyway. Took a ch chunk of sample for detritals. The age of this thing is a little controversial. It's not too controversial. I mean, we know it's Huronian. Uh, we probably think it's equivalent to the Misagi Formation in part. Uh, but the, I don't know. The base of the thing on the west side, where it's in contact with the old Archean Nices that are of granitoids in origin. The stuff that they've drawn a bunch of faults there. I didn't see any fault. I couldn't find the contact though. But from the old descriptions, it doesn't sound like there's a fault there. But the class, the conglomerate on the bottom, contains mostly these granitoids or these nices with some quartz. The conglomerates on the east side contain thessalon, so it kind of means you. Yeah, two sources coming in. As you go up in the formation, quartz pebbles are dominant. And the whole thing, other than the rounded pebbles near the base, almost none of it's rounded. Even the sand grains are angular. And it's, you know, mostly lithic to arcosic. There's some quartzite in it, pure quartzite, but not a lot. Anyway, so I don't know how this thing for the traditional view is that it was a fault-bounded alluvial fan deposit, but I look at this thing and the bottom, especially with those towards the granitoids looks a lot to me <laughs> like the base of the Galganda formation, which is interpreted as being glacial. And as you go up, it looks to me like the Fern Creek outwash, not the glacial part of the Fern Creek, but the outwash deposits of the Fern Creek in the UP of Michigan, uh, Dickinson County, so the south central part of the Upper Peninsula. I mean, obviously it's not, and I don't think that was extensive, but that's what they look like. And those are both interpreted as glacial. <laughs> so uh, it's quite possible some of this might be, you know, equivalent to the Ramsey, uh, further east, Sudbury and stuff, which is glacial. And I talk in glacial. These deposits are, the Huronian supergroup is 2. I don't know, 4, 8 billion to about, 2.20 billions. It, it's in there. It's actually a little older than that, but I forget off the top of my head. I've done many videos on it. So we know it's, it's you know, it's old. 
And I don't think this is alluvial fan. It doesn't show anything alluvial fans. Maybe the bases were, the basal conglomerates, but as you go up, it's definitely fluvial in origin. And then you have those mudstones, probably in about the middle of the formation or so. And this thing looks like it might have been deposited in just a shallow syncline or restricted basin or something. Area-wise, it's not very big compared to the other Huronian formations. This thing only goes from about Trans-Canada 17 east of Gross Cap, for those of you that know where that is. But from Trans-Canada 17 east to, uh, you know, big island that is kind of triangular. It's kind of shaped like this. It's, it's weird. But like I said, I didn't see any clear evidence of faulting. And then not even in the rocks I looked at. You know, I didn't see anything that looked like it was, you know, I didn't see any slick insides. I didn't see any breccia. I didn't see any of that. And another interesting thing to come more modern, fast forward two and a half billion years to modern glacial times. This lake, Trout Lake, trends east-west essentially, and it's got an island in the middle, kind of like a bullseye donut. And it's elongated though, east in the east-west direction. The glacial striations are south-southwest, you know, so they're south, slightly southwest like that. They're not southwest, southwest, but you know, like that. They're all like that. I measured a bunch of them in different areas. So we have a lake this way, glacial striations this way. And by the way, the hills, <laughs> this way to the southeast it's hilarious so this lake definitely although it might have been deepened by the glaciers it was not carved out by the glaciers it could not have been it's 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 probably i don't know i don't know it's several kilometers in length and maybe one in width so it's it's you know this way is far longer than this way north south is stouter than east west so i think it was a Mike thought this too. This guy, uh, Mike, Mike Doyle was with us. He actually hosted us and it was great, great guy clomped around in the woods with us and whatnot. He thinks it was an old river system. And he actually asked me what I thought it was, you know, before too. And I thought, I, I think this was an old river system. And I think that's what it was. Trout Lake was probably a pre-glacial river system, but you know, that's something else, and that's not the kind of stuff I worry about. I worry more about the Precambrian, but, you know, it's still cool. It's still cool, I'm not going to lie. Anyway, so, yeah, it was a great time. And, uh, came back on the 5th. <sighs> Late thunderstorms. And, like, oh, and it was, oh, my God, it was, like, above 33 degrees Celsius. That's above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, for those of you. Both the second, the or on the second the third and the fourth and i was dying you know i'm chunky but i can still climb but i was dying and of course when we leave it drops back down to like you know what was that 19 celsius so like 70 ish 68 ish something like that of course but mike's out there he's running around the, he's not a young guy he's running around these woods like a jackrabbit and his idea of hydration is beer. It's like, dude, you can't do that when it's this hot. I was worried about the guy, but he made it, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I, 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 I was struggling though, especially on the fourth when I got all cut up. I, I was really struggling. That was the hottest day too. But anyway, so I think that's it. <laughs> it's coming up on nine minutes. So there will be a video about it, short video. I just wanted to do something because I haven't done something in like two weeks for you guys. Anyway, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I hope you learned something.